You know, you think with, uh, you think that when people create something and people would want to imitate that. As, as they say for a long time now, that cliche that, uh, that the sincerest form of flattery is imitation, right? And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, you'd look at that as a good thing because when, when, you, when an artist creates something or when anybody creates something, and you have another person not necessarily copying that, or maybe they are, uh, not necessarily because they want to steal it, because, because they just want to be, be like it. And, and that shows that uh, whoever created it in the first place has something to offer, right? Uh, it shows that, uh, that uh, they were doing a good thing in the first place. But uh, in cases like this, uh, I find it a bit uh, asinine to really throw around claims that don't really have a strong standing. Uh, so what we're talking about in specifically is the is the art made by Amanda Piel, uh, the Toronto artist that painted a few pictures there similar to the Woodland art, Woodland art style, uh, made made popular and famous by a artist named Norval Mosro, and uh, and consists of big bold character, big bold colors and uh, thick. Uh, black lines that there, right, to create a uh, kind of a, sort of a 2D image that it's actually pretty cool. And uh, I've seen this art from art before, and it's really beautiful. And I see what Amanda has done, uh, Amanda PL, I should just call her by, by PL. Uh, and what she's done is, be is beautiful too. However, what people are trying to claim is that, is that, uh, that essentially what she's doing is is essentially a carbon copy of what of what Morse Rowe is doing, and and I find that to be a, a bit ridiculous. Uh, there's even an artist that was that was said in this uh, in this uh, CBC article here. I, I got a cheat sheet here, or a cheat phone, I should say. Sue me. Um, saying that you know it bastardizes the Woodlands art style and the stories that go along with that. And, uh, and that her art, what she created, is a form of cultural genocide. Now, I find that genocide is, the word itself, the way he's using it, it has become diluted, right? And I uh, just looked up uh, my good old friend Google here. It's like, well, what defines genocide, right? Uh, what's the idea of genocide? And so what does Google say? And uh, it says right here, the deliberate killing of a large group of people, especially those of a particular ethnic group or nation. So, so uh, as a lot of people know, uh, especially among Aboriginals, that that uh, for about a century, it's over a century, the government had sanctioned uh, forced assimilation schools on Aboriginals to. Essentially, take up, essentially take up a culture to take up the the uh, sort of enlightenment uh, modern culture that that was to, that was uh, uh, moving at the time there. So so as to essentially have them transi transition to more uh, Canadian sort of modern society uh, as opposed to uh, their own. And I think a lot of people can look back at that and say. That was wrong. Uh, you know, that was definitely something that should not have happened, and uh, and it's something that uh, definitely will ne never go back to. And uh, and uh, it's uh, and you know that's a good thing. Uh, and a lot of people are on, are on our side in, in the, on those terms. Uh, I remember a few a few years back, there was a Caucasian teacher that was ta that was uh, teaching Can Canadian history. And uh, he uh, implemented some Aboriginal history because, surprise, surprise, Aboriginal history is part of Canadian history. And so, uh, and he was being lambasted by Aboriginal, saying that, no, he can't teach that because he's not Aboriginal. And I find that, and I always found that to be counterproductive because by him teaching these, uh, teaching
teaching these lessons there uh, about with Aboriginal history, it shows that he sympathizes and that he understands the struggle that Indigenous peoples have gone through, and he wants to share that uh, with with his students. And uh, and I feel like saying saying to him and saying to people that they can't paint or they can't teach a certain topic because of their race is ridiculous. Uh, and I think it's, uh, it, don't, it doesn't move us forward, but rather it moves us backward. And it really uh, closes off and pigeonholes us as Aboriginals uh, in, a, in a state where you know, we're not really being diverse, we're not really being open-minded, but rather, but rather we're just keeping ourselves separate and saying, you know, and saying, you know, we're a diverse culture, but we're not, but we're not going to actually, you know, practice any of this, right? And to say that, to say that Amanda PL's art is a form of cultural genocide, you know, genocide, well, at least, you know, racism, I, sh I should say, uh, the way I was, the way I was brought up learning about it is that you hate another person's race and you think that your your race is superior uh, is, that your race is superior to another person's right uh, to sort of this cultural racial superiority and that in itself is racism and to put that claim over Amanda PL's head I think is incredibly unfair and I think it's wrong and uh, because he even says in the article itself, and in multiple articles, saying how you know, she learned how to become an art teacher, and she admired the artwork of uh, Nora Brown Mostro and you know, tried to imitate that style there, right? And if you actually look at her paintings there, yeah, they are quite similar, but they're not the same. They're not a carbon copy. You know, she didn't paint the same thing as Mostro did. Uh, uh, you know, she painted and she painted the bird, and so did uh, so did Morsero many many times. But you know they're not the same. Uh, it's a different picture. Uh, she made her own version of it, and uh, and people are saying that uh, that her art, you know, the way she describes it or the way she's doing doing it, and or, or even the fact that she's doing it in the first place, devalues or uh, uh, and some somehow devalues uh, the lessons and the stories that go along with that. Like she has to, like she has to, you know, think about that. I think it's better that uh, for people who, who have that, uh, for people who have that culture and everything, it's better that it's coming from them, and that she can take that style and put her own spin on it, and that's what she's doing. She's not claiming that she's, uh, she never claimed that she was Aboriginal. She never did, did so, and and sh and. Uh, uh, but, but she's shown that she's very multicultural, and that uh, and that uh, we shouldn't hold it against her for painting the way she wants to paint. Uh, I mean, the say the say. The uh, I mean, the the claim, you know, cultural genocide over her. You know, she put some paint on some canvas, and then. And then uh, somebody called it genocide, <laughs> right? It's just uh, you know that that her painting uh, you know has to do with uh, you know the eradication of the Aboriginal culture. As far as I know, you know, uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, the Aboriginal culture could be in a better state. I mean, it's uh, it's I mean, with all the missing women's. Uh, things there and things I can go on and on about about there there right and the things that honestly that I don't really care to talk about because uh, it's just really heartbreaking to uh, to really just kind of rest on the stuff if anything uh, I've always known uh, my family and Aboriginals in general uh, as uh, ones that make the best of what you have as opposed to just being angry all the time and being uh, a popular word now is triggered and just uh, 
and uh, you know just make the best of uh, of what you have. You know, just to make the best of what uh, of who you're with and uh, who you love. And uh, and I think we really need to re-educate ourselves and uh, and sh and uh, really share uh, really share our culture as opposed to just uh, insulting people who want to borrow from it. Because as as I said, uh, uh, by if people want to borrow that show that shows that we have something of value. It shows that we uh, that we've made an impact of some sort. And this being art, uh, it's a good impact. And it's so ambiguous uh, <laughs> to put these claims there over her head. Not all, not all her paintings look, look this, you know, are exactly this, are exactly the same too. I mean. I mean, you look at some of them too, and she'll have something sort of similar to a Novan Lois Rose, and then, uh, and then in this, on the same canvas, uh, you'll have some sort of Jackson Pollock type thing going on, right? So, yeah, uh, I don't think this is the right path uh, that we should be going down uh, for us. Uh, and I personally, I think it's a shame uh, that we hang that over her and that we shame her when there's no shame to be had because she did nothing wrong. So, uh, all I want to say to uh, uh, PL herself, if you ever see this, don't ever tell, don't let, let anyone tell you what you can and can't do or tell you how you should paint or what you can't paint. Stick to your guns. And just uh, take inspiration from where you get it. And you know you are young, uh, and so am I. Uh, and uh, because uh, as as an artist, I know you evolve over time. And most row uh, develop that style over a lifetime. And who knows where you'll be 50 years from now. So uh, yeah. And just in case for. Anyone who doesn't think uh, that I'm Aboriginal here, just gotta cover my my thing here. There we go. Uh, I've been a uh, North India and Northern Affairs Canada treaty member since 2001, and uh, yeah, uh, she did nothing wrong, and uh, just let her paint.